In today's lab, we are going to find the heat of fusion of ice, or the energy it takes to melt ice, change its phase from uh, ice to water. So what we're gonna do is a lab that you may have done in chemistry. We're gonna start with 100 grams of water, which I've measured in this um, graduated cylinder. So the mass of that water is 100 grams. And next, I'm going to get the initial temperature of the water. And um, I'm going to do that with um, a temperature probe, which is pretty cool. I actually can Bluetooth this temperature probe to my um, vernier graphical analysis. And so I will put this temperature probe in the water. And then we'll just zoom in on our measurement here. And it looks like the water temperature is 23.6 degrees Celsius. So that's my initial temperature of the water. Okay, next I am going to get the temperature of some ice. So I have ice in this cooler bag. I don't know how well you can see it, but there is ice in there. And I'm going to measure the temperature of the ice. So I've basically just stuck the temperature probe inside the cooler bag. And now I am measuring the temperature of the ice. I'm just gonna wait a few moments for this to stabilize. Pretty exciting, huh? Still going, still going. Put this where you can see it. Still going. Usually I get, well, it should be zero, right? But let's, we're gonna actually check it here. It's been in this cooler bag all morning and it's starting to melt. I've got water dripping all over the place. Oh, looks like we might've bottomed out. 0.6. Okay, so it looks like the temperature of our ice is 0.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, now our next job, next task is to mass our ice. So I'm going to zero this scale with a little tray on it and I'm going to quickly take um, a piece of ice. I'll take a double one. I'm going to dry it. I'm actually drying my ice. It's not dry ice, but I'm drying my ice. And then I'm going to mass it. And the mass fit is 30 grams. Okay, Oop, 29 grams. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ice and the water into a calorimeter. It's just an insulated cup. So I'm going to put the ice in, I'm gonna pour the water over it, put the lid on, and put my temperature probe in. And then I'm going to collect this data. So let me make sure that I'm 
Okay. Okay, so I can see the temperature decreasing as a function of time. And I'm just gonna have to wait a moment. And this is gonna be my last piece of data that I need. I can see the ice melting. While it's going, I don't know how well you can see this. You can see the ice melting in the calorimeter. I'm getting a nice smooth curve. Ooh, I bumped it. Ice is still melting. Just mixing it around a little bit. Still mixing and melting. You can scrub this part of the video if you like. Or maybe it'll remind you of being in class when a lab takes a long time. Still melting. Maybe I should have chosen a smaller ice cube. I stir too much, I actually introduce more heat. You can see here, there are two little ice cubes still in there. Starting to look like I know where I'm going to wind up. I'm at seven degrees Celsius. Still melting. And I actually ran out of collection time, but I'm gonna keep going. I think it's kind of neat to see that graph. I can still read the temperature down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna wait. Looks like I might have about another minute here for this to melt. I'll start a new collection. We're at 6.4 degrees, 6.3. Again, I'm just ensuring that the water mixes here. Just one 
little piece of ice chunk floating in there that I'm still waiting for. We're getting really close. Okay, I think, I think we're there. I don't see any more ice. So the ice is melted and we are at 5.9 degrees Celsius. So our final temperature is 5.9 degrees Celsius. Now there's one more piece of information you need to solve this, and that is the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So remember there are, um, there are three things happening here. The ice is warming up, the ice is changing phase, and then the temperature of the water is changing. In addition to that, some of the heat goes into the calorimeter itself, and the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 28.8 joules per degree Celsius. And if you take that number and multiply it by the change in temperature of the calorimeter, you will get the heat that went into the calorimeter itself. All right, again, your mission is to determine the heat of fusion of ice based on this data that I have shared with you.